Good evening, everyone. My name is John Bonifaz. I'm the president of Free Speech for People. We're pleased to have you join us for this town hall on the New York Democracy Preservation Act. Uh, we have an exciting lineup uh, today, and uh, this is going to be a very important discussion on a critical and bold reform on campaign finance that is pending now in the New York legislature. We're going to first hear from Senator Michael Gianars, the deputy majority leader in the New York State Senate, who's the lead sponsor on this model legislation. Uh, following him, we will hear from Zephyr Teachout, Fordham law professor and a champion for democracy. Uh, we will then have video remarks that Congressman Jamie Raskin of Maryland has prepared for this event tonight, a member of the, Senate, the House Judiciary Committee. Uh, and then we will close out with remarks from Free Speech for People's campaign director, Alexandra Flores Quilty. I wanna thank our co-sponsors uh, for this event with Free Speech for People are the Empire State Indivisible, uh, as well as the Center for American Progress. Uh, so I wanna turn over to our uh, first speaker, Senator Gennaris. Thank you so much for your leadership. Thank you, John. Uh, thank you to Free Speech for People and the co-sponsors, my friends at Empire State Indivisible. Uh, and of course, Center for American Progress and the illustrious Zephyr Teachout. It's always a pleasure to share a space with her on uh, the important issues of the day. Uh, this is quite an uh, innovative way, I think, of tackling a problem we've been dealing with for many years. Uh, ever since the days of the uh, Citizens United decision, we've been trying to figure out how do we get corporate money out of our politics as much as possible when the Supreme Court has basically said we can't. Um, and so this is a model that builds upon uh, existing court precedent where you are allowed to um, prohibit and restrict the ability of foreign entities to participate in our democratic process for obvious reasons. Uh, and as it turns out, a lot of the big corporations that uh, exist in our country uh, in this modern economy have substantial foreign investment, foreign ownership uh, as part of their companies. And so what uh, this legislation proposes is that if there is an entity that uh, has a single foreign individual with greater than 1% ownership in a company or uh, multiple foreign um, uh, entities that, uh, that can constitute 5% uh, or more of, uh, of corporate ownership, then that, th that entity would be prohibited from participating in elections, from spending, whether through direct contributions or contributions to PACs or through independent expenditures, they would be out of the ball game and would require substantial certification to make sure that, um, uh, that anyone that is participating does not meet those qualifications. Now you might ask, what does that mean? Who, which companies would fall under the definition and which wouldn't? Uh, well, there was a survey of over hundred companies uh, uh, within the S&P 500. And it turns out that 98% of those companies have 5% or more foreign ownership. It's just a, uh, a matter of fact, as we deal with uh, big companies in this modern economy, that there's a lot of foreign money flowing into them. Uh, and uh, so what we, what we fundamentally do is take uh, those big corporations out of the game, off the table, so their level of influence would be lessened. A lot of the times, the, uh, their participation takes the form of um, uh, uh, trying to influence ballot initiatives or uh, through dark money and campaigns, not direct money. And so that would also be prohibited. As we mentioned, sometimes it's very specific. You know, you had Amazon, my good friends at Amazon. I say that with uh, great uh, sarcasm. Uh, but uh, they tried to scuttle a, um, a tax that the city council of Seattle was trying to, uh, to implement. Uh, and they actually tried to take out individual council people through a uh, uh, pack that they had set up. So that's the kind of thing we're trying to stop from happening. Entities that clearly have uh, a, a biased interest uh, in the policymaking, uh, uh, whether it's a locality or a state or even a national government, um, essentially trying to buy these elections but through their great wealth and, and influence. And so we're, we're trying to do this. It, it is fairly innovative uh, in the nation. I believe Seattle itself has done something like this, not surprisingly. Uh, and St. Petersburg and Florida are two places that have done it. Uh, it's not in place in any state as far as we know, uh, and hopefully New York will become the first one to do this uh, if we can pass it uh, through both houses before our session ends, which is coming up uh, June 10th is our last day of scheduled session. 
Uh, and it's my intention to try and do what we can to get it across the finish line in New York before then. Uh, and hopefully it's not just take care of the problem within New York, but also serve as a model for other places to, to follow this example. Um, perhaps even the federal government, that would be wonderful if they, if they went down this direction. So uh, I'm happy to, to be here and to answer any questions that, that may arise from any of the attendees, uh, uh, but I don't wanna take up the time to hear from, uh, from our other panelists. And John, thank you again for um, organizing this and putting us together. Uh, and I look forward to success. Fantastic, thank you, Senator, so much. Uh, and we really are thrilled with your leadership on this in, in New York. And we do think that New York can be the first state in the country to lead following on the victory uh, in Seattle in January, 2020, uh, where this uh, bill was passed and St. Petersburg before that. Um, and and I, I think we'll hear more from Alexandra on how people can get involved to help support the Senator and this bill uh, in New York and to help get it passed. I also wanna say before we go to Zephyr Teach Out that if you have a question uh, this evening, uh, please, if you're on the Zoom call, please feel free to write that in the Q&A box and we will try to answer your questions. If you're watching on Facebook, uh, please feel free to make a comment and, and put the question in the comment section. We'll, we'll have them brought over uh, to this a Zoom conversation and try to answer that way as well. So our next speaker is Zephyr Teachout, a Fordham Law professor, a preeminent champion on, on democracy in this country, and we're thrilled to have her join us this evening as well. Yeah, I'm really um, glad to be here. I think this is a really important moment and a really important bill. And I, uh, we're in the middle of a real democratic revival in New York, and Senator Janaris has been at the forefront of that, um, both in terms of taking on in really hard ways um, the uh, you know direct attacks from big corporate spending, and also in terms of expanding the franchise and building out the ways in which people can be involved. And I think it would be a just an extraordinary moment for New York, which had a really different legislative session this year, uh, where you saw a lot more involvement, you saw a lot more leadership from the um, from the representative houses to sort of have a capstone of New York leading on fighting against corporate foreign money in our elections. Um, so it's a big deal. Um, and getting people involved is gonna be really, really critically important. I wanna emphasize a few uh, different things, underlining some of the things that Mike already talked about. But one is that, um, you know, we have been since 1976, really, when you look sort of back at the constitutional history, <laughs> uh, living in a constitutional structure where the courts have be, been um, increasingly skeptical of campaign finance reform, <laughs> of rules that allow for um, uh, limits on uh, corporate funding in elections. <laughs> Um, the, the, the worst moment in that, although there have been several bad moments, was Citizens United, where the court said that it was not corrupting to have outside corporate money in our elections. But despite this now 45-year um, trend, the courts have also been absolutely clear that um, states Federal government, localities have the authority to ban foreign money in elections. So I think there's a natural skepticism that sometimes comes up when you are facing a reform of the ambition of this, and it's an ambitious and important reform. But believe me, and I've got all kinds of critiques of the court. <laughs> On this area, the court has been clear. Um, and it's I, it's 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 an innovative way to approach this, but it also really flows from the judiciary's own logic. And of course, that's true. Like if you look at uh, from the founding of our country, and and some of you who are here uh, and I have been at events before where we've talked about the emoluments clause and the other clauses designed to protect against foreign money in our elections, something that we have sort of finally ended the Trump nightmare uh, of, of seeing the, the ways in which foreign money can influence uh, policy. But there we have 
uh, history in this country that goes back to the founding of prohibitions against uh, foreign money in, in our elections. Um, and a series of laws that have been upheld um, about, about that foreign money. So one, this, this is a, it's, a, it's a brilliant and a key move. A second key point, and this relates to the Senator's um, uh, point about Seattle, which many of you may not know, is that after Citizens United, um, a lot of my colleagues and other people said, yeah, but corporations aren't going to directly engage, not the corporations, they aren't themselves, sort of tacky, you know, and even as you see the rise of billionaire super PACs, you'll, you'll see, see this argument. Um, but we know that corporations will and do um, engage directly in elections. And we've just seen the beginning of the most blatant kind, like what we just saw in Seattle, where you see the very biggest corporation uh, choosing to make a strategic choice to politically intervene to defeat council members. And so I also think it's really important to do this now to nip that in the bud. Because once you have Amazon that has a political department that is organized and structured around winning and losing city council elections, that culture and structure is flooding from one big corporation to another. So we've got to nip this in the bud now and be very clear, Exxon, it's not worth your time, Uber, don't try it because this is a ban. Because, because if we stop it now, it's a lot easier than after the fact. So I think that's a really um, critical moment here. Um, and um, finally, the argument, uh, you know, here I'm a little bit, I know I'm speaking to the choir if you're here, but, but I just want to point out that the argument against corporate money and the argument against foreign money are very tied together. They're basically real and legitimate fears that institutions that aren't really designed to care about the lives of people in our communities are, um, are in our elections trying to influence our elections. And um, that when you have the combination, when you have the growing percentage of foreign ownership of US stocks, I think it's about a third at this point, um, when you have the, uh, the profit maximization pressure, Citizens United opportunity and examples, you have an example of um, a, a, a really fundamental democratic threat where um, companies with, uh, compared to most people, unlimited um, resources can, can sit and bring to bear on a state Senate race, or threaten in a city council race. And we all know how politicians work. You know, the mere fear of having um, the engagement of some of these big corporations can basically make somebody say, hey, why am I gonna even bother engaging in that? And it's, you know, it's one of the reasons I'm so glad we have Mike here and these fearless politicians in New York who have shown they're not afraid, but we have to build a system for people who are gonna be afraid because that's the way politics works. So uh, I am just really excited about you all being here. What, imagine it moving from Seattle to St. Petersburg to New York State. Um, it will be a big national deal. Um, and I, I really think it can change the shape of politics, not just in New York, but around the country. Fantastic. Thank you, Zephyr, so much. Uh, our, our next speaker is, as I said, Congressman Raskin via video remarks he's prepared uh, for this event. And we're going to play those for you now. Hey, everybody, it's Congressman Jamie Raskin from uh, Maryland's beautiful 8th Congressional District, calling out to all my friends in New York, fighting for the New York Democracy Preservation Act. Good for you. I'm totally with you on this. From the standpoint of one person, one vote democracy, um, all corporate spending in our elections is uh, a form of foreign influence and foreign penetration. A corporation is not a human being. A corporation is not a citizen. A corporation is not a political actor. Uh, Chief Justice John Marshall said way back in the 19th century in the Dartmouth College versus Woodward case that uh, a corporation is an artificial entity, invisible, intangible, existing only in contemplation of law 
and possessing only the rights conferred upon it by the legislature and not the political rights of the people. And yet the Supreme Court and Citizens United turned all of that upside down and transformed every corporate treasury in America into a political slush fund for the CEOs. So what's true of all corporations is doubly or triply true of foreign owned corporations. Uh, and of course, there's not that big a distinction because um, foreign uh, companies and uh, nationals can own stock in our corporate, in American based corporations. Um, and so uh, this is an attempt basically to say, let's let's reverse things and try to restore the realm of citizen sovereignty over our own politics by repelling uh, foreign corporate control and involvement. Um, the reason why we allow all people to vote is because each person's share and stake in the democracy is equal and each person's needs and values and priorities have to be equally valued. That's not true of foreign corporations uh, that clearly have economic motives and agendas that have nothing to do with the interests of the people of our country. So uh, congratulations on what you're doing and we're gonna continue to fight in Washington for democracy for and of and by the people and not by corporations all over the world. We're thrilled to have Congressman Raskin's uh, support uh, of this effort in New York and, and around the country. I should have also stated at the outset that Congressman Raskin is a leader on this in Congress. He's introduced a bill on this very question of foreign influence corporate uh, spending, and he'll be reintroducing it very soon. So our next speaker is Alexandra Flores Quilty, our campaign director at Free Speech for People, who will share with you how you can help get involved in this fight for the New York Preservation Democracy Preservation Act uh, moving forward. Alexandra. Thank you, John, and good evening, everyone. As John said, I am the campaign director of Free Speech for People, um, but I'm also a Brooklyn resident. In New York, we have an exciting opportunity to put elections back into the hands of the people with the Democracy Preservation Act. Corporations spend millions to influence New York elections and drown out the voices and votes of New Yorkers. This bill will stop big corporations with foreign investors from spending money in our elections and will unrig our elections. However, it will take us, the people, to make this a reality and to pass the Democracy Preservation Act in New York. We need our voices to be heard loud and clear by our elected representatives. They need to know that as their constituents, we want them to pass this bill. The New York State Legislative Session ends in just four weeks, and the best way that we can ensure the passage of the Democracy Preservation Act and put an end to foreign invested corporations influencing our elections is to contact our representatives and make it clear that we want them to champion this bill. The first step all of us can take is to join together tomorrow, Friday, May 13th, for a call-in day to our representatives. Tomorrow at noon, we are going to call our representatives, urging them to co-sponsor and pass the Democracy Preservation Act. Everyone who is tuned in right now via Zoom will receive a follow-up email tomorrow with everything you need to participate in the call-in day. For those of you who are tuned in right now via the Facebook live stream, we're gonna be putting right now uh, in the chat a link for you to sign a petition in support of the Democracy Preservation Act. When you sign that petition this evening, you will then receive a follow-up email tomorrow with everything you need to participate in the call-in day. So go ahead and click that link right now and sign up so you can participate in the call-in day tomorrow. We are so grateful for the leadership of Senator Janaris who has introduced this bill that will restore the integrity of our elections. But now it's up to us to get the rest of the New York State Legislature to join him and pass this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Alexandra. So I wanna remind everyone, if you have a question and you're on the Zoom a call, feel free to put that in the Q&A. And if you have a question you're watching via Facebook, feel free to put it in the comment section and uh, they'll move it over to the chat for us to see. Uh, so I wanna just open it up first, uh, a question for Senator Janaris about this uh, bill. Where, where do you think it's going in the, in the legislature with your colleagues in the state Senate and in the assembly? 
Sorry, you're on mute, so yeah. Yes, I saw that. Um, I can speak about the Senate a lot uh, with a lot more clarity and uh, confidence than the Assembly. Uh, I think we're in good shape in the Senate. One of the advantages of being the deputy leader is I do bring a little bit of, uh, of heft with my proposals. And so uh, we have a number of important sponsors on the bill already. I think we're up to seven or so. Um, and it is a priority of mine in the re four remaining weeks of our legislative session to get through. So hopefully we'll see it start moving through the process imminently. Um, and then it's over to the assembly side and that's in somebody else's hands. I mean, when, when Alexander talks about the, the calls and the, uh, uh, the uh, pressure on the legislators, um, that's where that will come in handy. Um, and, and you know, if, we have, if we're having a problem in the Senate, I'll certainly let you know, but I think that part, um, I could have greater confidence in saying, I think we're in good shape on the Senate side. Great, and, and Zephyr, what's your view on the impact this would have on the broader debate about Citizens United, money and politics, uh, and, and all that connected? I, I think uh, it would be, an extraordinary moment of hope um, because in the wake of Citizens United, a lot of us and we've worked together have been pushing for um, uh, changing the way that we fund elections, <laughs> um, opening up a matching fund system, democracy dollar systems, all that is incredibly exciting. And at the same time, there is this nagging anger and fear that, well, if we don't change the court, we can't go at the heart of Citizens United, right? And uh, we are all in it for the long haul for making sure the court reverses Citizens United. But this bill gives the lie to that. This bill shows that when you were talking about a bill that is covering, what is it, uh, John, it's like 84% of, um, what's the, well, 98% if you consider the uh, Fortune 100, but yeah, right. uh, over 85% of the Fortune 500, yes. 85% you know, of the Fortune 100, and that's what our fear is about. You know, we're not like that. The fear is about big corporations with big political teams who aren't working on making better shoes, but are working on reducing their tax rate at, at the expense of people or or changing policy for reasons that have nothing to do with the needs of the community. That's, that's, the, that's the problem with Citizens United. And here you have a bill that says, no, we can actually do something legislatively, constitutionally, even under this court that goes at the heart of spending, not just increasing. And we need both for addressing Citizens United. We need, you know, um, both a more decentralized spending model, but we also really do have to stop this corporate spending. It's truly out of control. And we're still in, you know, we're still in the first 10 years. Don't think we're done in the levels of sophistication that these companies uh, can engage in. I mean, there's other implications that I think are actually also really significant. Uh, one of the things that Citizens United opened up is the floodgates for corporations to do electioneering with their employees. <laughs> Um, and that's, we're still also in early stages that that's connected to, to spying, but it's also like feeling free, like, okay, we can electioneer, we can tell people who to vote for and who not to vote for, which is really um, uh, terrifying and dangerous for workers to have that kind of pressure on them. We got to put a stop to that right away. So I think the implications are enormous because once you pass a bill like this, it goes right at what that. Uh, CEO thinks makes sense to invest in and whether or not you have an electoral political team that is focused outwardly and focused on your employees spending money in elections in the in the biggest corporations in the in the US um, and operating in New York. Um, so I think it's a it's a it would be a massive, massive moment. Thank you. And, and Senator, maybe connected to that, could you share with the audience and all of us what drove you to kind of introduce this bill and be the lead sponsor of it? What, what is it? I mean, you've got a lot of things on your agenda to, to be pushing in the legislature. Why are you, you leading on this bill as well? Uh, the last uh, three plus years, I would say, I've gotten a real flavor of our large corporations attempting to take over communities and control the politics of a, of a, of a situation. For those that Maybe unfamiliar, I represent the part of New York that Amazon wanted to build its headquarters in and uh, was very involved in the fight that ultimately got them to uh, depart. But watching them shake down localities throughout the country 
uh, with impunity and just say, all of you come to me and offer me your public dollars, uh, even though I don't need them. This is the biggest corporation on earth, uh, essentially asking for, for bribes to grace a city with the presence of uh, their headquarters. Um, and as it turns out, it was a sham as, as uh, we always knew. And so um, incidentally, not to go off into that tangent, but they are now growing jobs in New York City at the same or faster pace than they had promised they would had they put their headquarters here. So all it would have been would have been three billion of our dollars going to them for the same result. Uh, but be that as it may, as I started uh, researching their influence uh, over uh, governments, I, I traveled to Seattle. I met with some of their council people. I talked about the influence they were having there started looking into, and it's not just all about Amazon, a lot of big corporations do this, they just happen to be the, the most brazen and the largest of them. Um, and it's it's a real crisis point where we are losing control of our government uh, to these profit-making entities who only care about their bottom line and their deep pockets. Uh, and that is not the way things are supposed to work. The Supreme Court dealt us a horrible setback with the Citizens United decision. Um, and we're trying any way we can to recapture um, our democracy for, the citizens and not for the corporations and not for the profiteers and not for the small handful of billionaires that seem to think they're entitled to control everything. Uh, and this was a really uh, effective way to kind of push back against some of that, uh, that influence and push back against Citizens United specifically, uh, that I just thought was a very elegant solution to, to the problem we're trying to grapple with, short of a federal law or a constitutional amendment to overturn the Supreme Court decision. Great, thank you. And, and Zephyr, you mentioned even with this Supreme Court with respect to this uh, bill, could you could you talk a little bit further about the constitutionality uh, of this approach? Why why would it, in your view, withstand even before this current Supreme Court? Um, yeah, um, I mean the the most straightforward way to say it is that the immediately after Citizens United, one of the big questions was, did the logic of Citizens United <laughs> Um, which was grounded in a sort of series of different arguments, but one of the one of the parts of the logic was um, uh, people have a right to hear regardless of the source. That was sort of one of the pillars of Citizens United. So even if it's from a corporate entity, <laughs> um, uh, the the uh, listeners have a First Amendment right to hear that, and so some uh, some questions were then raised about, well, would that suddenly topple two hundred and ten two hundred twenty years of case law, which has said, hey, uh, foreign money does for, uh, for, foreigners do not have a right to spend money in our elections, right? Uh, which was taken for granted for a long time, but then as legislation uh, came up was routinely upheld. And the, the, uh, the federal case on, on that issue very clearly came down on the side of no, um, the uh, Congress uh, continues to have the right to regulate uh, foreign speakers and limit foreign speakers for our elections. And just to sort of briefly say, the, if the opposite was true, um, then you could basically see, you know, uh, Saudi Arabia, Russia, uh, pick your country, um, uh, Qatar, uh, directly engaging in your city council races um, because they had a direct interest in the, or in your in congressional races because they have a direct interest in federal policy. Like the, the you know, without such a limitation that would lead to absolutely absurd results. Um, so I, I, uh, I, I even the, it's actually been a deep, um, without going too much details, it's a deep philosophical weakness in Citizens United itself that it doesn't grapple with the fact that of course we have to be able to limit foreign money in our elections. Like that's sort of the sort of fundamental aspect of sovereignty. Um, and uh, if that is true, why couldn't we also uh, limit corporate money? And Citizens United does not take that seriously, but nor does it, do the opposite, which is to say, yeah, all uh, all limits are off. Yes, and, and I would add to that, of course, that in 2012, two years after Citizens United, the court ruled in Bloom and VFEC that the longstanding ban, as, as you know, Zephyr, on foreign nationals having no role spending money directly or indirectly 
in our elections uh, remained constitutional. Uh, and so you have this tension between Citizens United, which created this loophole uh, that allows foreign influence corporate spending and the longstanding ban on foreign nationals having no role uh, being upheld. And, and Judge Kavanaugh, the DC Circuit, wrote the opinion that was upheld by the Supreme Court uh, in 2012 in Bloom and BFEC. Uh, so we, we share the view uh, that this is a, a constitutional measure that would withstand scrutiny even before the Supreme Court uh, and would be a critical step forward in the overall fight uh, to end the reign of big money influence in our elections. I want to ask Alexandra, you know, from the organizing perspective, what value do you see with this kind of approach in reaching people who are engaged in the fight against big money in politics? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, fundamentally, uh, uh, you know, this bill is really about putting more power to us as voters, as New Yorkers. And uh, so often over and over again, in election cycles in New York, and I think this is only increasing, our votes and voices get drowned out uh, by the flow of millions of dollars by corporations. And so uh, uh, this is a, a direct way in which we can and stopped, uh, stop our voices getting drowned out. And the most important thing that we can do right now in order to ensure the passage of this is by uh, calling our representatives, sending messages to them, um, making it loud and clear that, you know, we want to uh, uh, restore the integrity to our elections. And this is a clear path to do that. Um, and so I think that, you know, if folks can participate in tomorrow's call-in day, that is one of the, the first concrete steps, but we only have four weeks. And so there's a lot that we can do in the next few weeks. Um, it's very, very exciting. We can lead the country um, in uh, this really groundbreaking reform that can um, uh, really set a precedent that I think is important for our democracy in the country overall. Thank you, Alexandra. So just for closing remarks, uh, Senator and, and, and Zephyr, do you wanna share uh, where you think we're going with this and, and, and anything else uh, that the audience should hear? Senator? Sure, and thank you, John. First of all, I just wanna thank everyone who's viewing and participating in this. There's a lot going on today. Uh, and these issues, while of critical importance, don't get the front pages typically. <laughs> and so it's always been, you know, we've, uh, as Ephraim made reference to the fact that when we took the majority of the state Senate three years ago, we have focused so hard on uh, improving the democracy, making it easier to vote. Uh, we've really taken New York from among the worst in the nation to among the first in the nation for ease of voting, especially at a time when other states are going in the opposite direction. Uh, but it really involves rolling up your sleeves and, and doing the hard work because this, these kinds of issues don't drive themselves. They're very um, uh, theoretical in some sense, right? You have to pass uh, a, a bill that becomes a law that then says corporations that have a certain percentage of foreign influence can't give. So drawing the, the causality from the beginning to the end uh, takes a lot of dedication and, and understanding. That's what we're relying on everyone who's watching to, to provide for us as you work with Alexandra and make the calls and tell people how important this is, the end result could not be more critical. Uh, it affects everything else. I always like to say when we make reforms to our democracy or improve our democracy, it affects any possible issue you could care about because that is that decides who's making the calls, who's pushing the buttons, yes or no, in Congress and elsewhere. Um, and, uh, and so we are working really hard in the next few weeks to get this done. And I do think it'll be a very big moment for the country uh, when we get there. So. Let me thank you all in advance for your work to make that happen uh, and thank all the panelists for being a part of it. Thank you, Senator. And, and Zephyr? Well, I just want to say that this is one of these minutes where you've got to back up your lawmakers. <laughs> we got great people in there. And, uh, you know, the, the, Maybe I, sometimes I didn't mention it as much as I should have, but it's so important to remember what the scam was. Uh, with Amazon, then Amazon is basically trying to take $3 billion from taxpayers <laughs> because it thinks it can. Um, and uh, we have to not allow that to happen. <laughs> so I really, uh, I, I, you know, this doesn't have to be a fan fest, but I really, really appreciate Mike's doing that work, connecting the dots, because he's totally right. 
the democracy work can sound just less sort of immediate, but it will become very immediate in two years if we don't pass this. And then in your local election, whether you are in Syracuse or in Statsburg or, or, or in New York City, where, when your local election is suddenly threatened by foreign corporate spending, you want to know that New York has passed a bill saying that is not happening here. Um, and that you can actually have the debate on subsidies on their own merits, <laughs> on the merits of the jobs that will be brought, not on the merits of threats um, and a kind of effort to uh, roll over. So please, I, I have a, I also have a lot of faith in the, faith in the Senate here. Um, the, just to be like real about uh, New York politics, you got to make your lawmakers know it matters to you. <laughs> That's the key, is you got to let those assembly members know, members know this is an issue that they're getting calls on and that they can't just scuttle <laughs> because there can, can be a temptation to say, mm, I like it, but not enough to get into a fight. <laughs> so please, the three calls to an assembly matter, three enthusiastic calls can make a difference. 30 makes an even bigger difference. Um, but this is a time of year where people are not getting as many calls, make them, and it can really make a difference for our democracy in New York and around the country. Thank you, Zephyr. And the, the bill number, we should start out with that, is S1126. Uh, that's what you want to call your senators on uh, and in the assembly. Uh, it's uh, um, assembly number 7458A7458 and S1126. And I'll just end, you know, free speech for people, we're proud to be working with Senator Gianaris in supporting uh, this bill. We were uh, involved in helping to draft the bill in St. Petersburg and the one in uh, Seattle. Uh, and we're, we're very proud to be working with the Senator now to help make New York uh, the first state in the country uh, to pass uh, this model legislation. It's pending now in six other states as well, uh, but New York is in the forefront. Uh, and, and Senator Warren and Congresswoman Jayapal have introduced uh, this very provision as part of their broad anti-corruption act, uh, as well as I said, Congressman Raskin preparing to introduce it as a standalone bill. So it's moving at the federal level as well, but the states will lead the way on this and New York can be right at the forefront. You can help make a difference uh, by joining in this campaign. Uh, thank you all for being part of this uh, this evening. Thank you, Senator Gianaris and Zephyr uh, for joining us and Alexandra. Uh, and, and thank you, Empire State Indivisible and Center for American Progress for co-sponsoring. Uh, we'll keep fighting for our democracy. Good night, everyone. Stay safe.